Hello everyone again. Welcome to our last session of Bexel Manager Online Education. Hopefully these sessions are just the first of many more that we're gonna organize in the future. My name is Mila Tapejovic. I'm the manager at Bexel Consulting and I'm with you again. Yesterday we explained how to create uh, and enrich your B model by adding additional documents and facility maintenance information in order to use it in facility maintenance processes. Today, I'll have a big support from my colleagues from uh, development department, which will explain you workflows and benefits of uh, using open API. Before that, uh, I'll briefly explain you how to export the information from Bexel Manager into Power BI. And I'll make an intro to our new feature related to our enter enterprise package, which is uh, work in common data environment. And as I've said, our lead software engineers, Uros Jovanovic and Filip Lukovic will be here with us and they'll present you the open API and the workflows using it because these are the best persons to, to explain you that. So for the start, I'll, I'll briefly explain you uh, how the workflow works with uh, exporting your B model into Power BI. And uh, as usually, I'm gonna start with a uh, same sample B model, which comes with the installation of Bexel Manager. And it's really, really easy and straightforward process because you have just one button you have to use in order to use uh, all the information created in, the in this Bexel Manager project, which can be exported and used and uh, otherwise published into Power BI online uh, platform. So one button for that is export to Power BI. And I have to mention, because we, we're receiving a lot of questions about how we can integrate the information, how we can publish all this into Power BI. I have to remind you that all the information uh, created in the Bexel Manager are published in the Power BI. And then they can use this information in order to organize them according to your needs. You can create your own templates in, in Power BI and then publish the information. But what you have to know is if you don't have the information which you want to export, then probably uh, you won't be able to actually create something uh, useful and uh, uh, feasible for your needs. So in order to have full template and in order to have all the information uh, i guess that you have to create uh, your cost estimation you need to have some kind of cost classification system you have to create your uh, cost version in order to use this information into power bi so the system works that way if you don't have any information the exporting process will just export the B model itself and the elements that these B models contains. So if you want to use all the information about the cost, resources, schedules, uh, clash detections, you have to create all these uh, priority export. So this sample B model have all these. We have the cost classification based on uniformat and master format. We have assigned cost versions and then we created few schedules uh, using that uh, methodologies and zones using the uh, uniformat based items. And uh, the process works really easily. I'm going to export this as a PBIX file format. And as soon as this exporting uh, process completes. I'm going to show you how you can open it and by default uh, the uh, template which is exported or actually the Power BI file which is exported from Bexel Manager has created one template and that template is practically uh, optimized for this sample project but it will work for any other project which has uh, cost estimation um, cost assignment and schedules. So you can use that kind of template 
for your project. And then if you're familiar with the Power BI, you can additionally change and optimize your template. So this information tells us that the, the process is completed. And now I'm going to skip to the Power BI. This is the Power BI desktop application, which is free and you can download it from the Microsoft uh, uh, website. And I'm going to open this exported Bexel sample project Power BI uh, file. So the system opens it. And once it's opened, you'll see how this created template looks like. So this is a template that we created and it comes with the, with this exporting file. And once it's opened, you need to refresh the data in order to tell the system to update all the information which are stored for each tab. And what is really important to know when you using Power BI application that all these information coming or exported from the Bexel manager are stored as different kinds of uh, uh, basically Excel like Excel look like uh, spreadsheets. And all these information are actually opened and positioned in Power BI application right here within the fields window. And you can see all these tables practically these are the tables with specific information exported from the Bexel manager and then you can use any kind of, of different visualization templates to organize and create the visual style for each of these tables and according to that uh, presented uh, visual style the report which is generated right here will be according to that. And this is uh, really, really briefly explained the workflow. So it's quite uh, straightforward, export all the information, open the document, hit the button to refresh all the information. And also depending on the size of your project and the number of the information, it can, it can take some time, but it's updated now. So you see the same picture, which is used when I exported the uh, the Power BI file. And then this is the uh, pre-created uh, template. And you can see what the information actually uh, uh, this template gives us. So the first one is Model Explorer, which provides you the different elements coming from the B model and also different cost versions. So if I choose which cost version we want to use in this template, I'm going to choose Uniformat Auto Assign, which is previously assigned cost version right here. So all these information are exported and I'm going to change it. So the system automatically updates the information. It reads the number of the elements which are assigned and it reads the cost, total cost est estimation according to that auto assigned uniform at best co based cost estimation. You can change each of these visual styles. So by ju just clicking on these, you can see the format shape options. And then if I select any of the windows, you can see which information from this field are related to that window. So you can rearrange or use different kinds of information. So if you're familiar with a Power BI desktop application, you'll be able to, to manage and create your own templates. The next one is clash detection, which actually shows us the clashes presented and you can switch between different clash jobs and you can adjust the filters and you can, according to the filter selected, you'll be able to see only these information. The next one is 5D cost estimation or 5D estimation, which shows us the total cost estimation also according to specific cost version. And then you can uh, filter for each, uh, let's say part of the building according to the specific segregation, which are the cost estimation. And of course, by hitting on each of these uh, visual styles, you can see which information are related to that and how to uh, change the visual style. The next one is progress, 
which so shows us in the progress reports, if you have multiple schedules, uh, which we have in this sample B model, and the first one is baseline planned schedule, the next one is actual with a progress input. So here we can check the information and compare the information from these from these two schedules. And this is practically the all the information that you can present right here. You can check right here within the information because all the information are exported and you can use them. And the last one is Gantt chart, which actually presents you the currently selected schedule. So we can switch between the schedules or we can compare uh, two different schedules. So this is just a brief template which, which comes with the uh, exported uh, information from the Bexel manager, but you can adjust it and change the template. So I think this is really uh, clear and uh, quite simple. So you just have to use uh, Power BI button and then you can rearrange and organize exported information using Power BI Windows des desktop application. The next topic for today is uh, a common data environment. So I'm gonna briefly present you another slide for this so you'll be able to understand what is the what are the benefits and what are the main workflow using this um, common data environment uh, for Bexel Manager. So I think you're familiar with this um, process diagram describing information management and it's according to uh, BIM ISO 1906 uh, uh, 19650 standard and uh, this actually presents how our common data environment is um, created and it's basically created um, to be in compliance with these standards and we created that kind of environment which uh, uses all these, uh, let's say, predefined processes according to the standards. And what is really important to understand is that the installation of uh, the common data environment uh, is done on client premises. So it means that you can use your own servers uh, to host the information and you'll be able to, to to, to know that the information which are stored in that way are really safe because are stored in your in your computers. So none, none of the other participants or uh, anyone else have the uh, access to the information unless you, you provide the credentials or access to them. The next thing is uh, what is really important is that all these, uh, let's say different versions of the project are optimized uh, when it comes to the saving uh, these uh, different versions on cloud. So these are optimized incre incrementals versions uh, when it comes to archiving these different, uh, uh, let's say, versions of the project. And also uh, all the previous versions of the project are also available. So it means you have the uh, full history and full access to the previous versions of the project. And the next thing is uh, the integration of all information. So practically you, you see that the uh, Bexel manager as the integrated platform for BIM management is at the center and all the information from the Bexel manager are published and downloaded from that uh, common cloud database uh, which are hosted on your, on your um, servers and all participants in that process uh, can provide and uh, create different kinds of information regarding to the specific process or different uh, work or job that they have to execute on their on the process on on the project regarding to the to the uh, client's needs and all these different let's say analysis or reports uh, once uploaded 
all other participants will be informed and they can automatically refresh and download the latest information. So practically this is the uh, collaboration between different users. So it, uh, common data environment enables uh, multi-users multi -user collaboration on the same project. And of course, if you have a multi-level projects with a with a multiple, uh, let's say, hierarchies of uh, your different disciplines and different parts of the project, it is also uh, enabled and available. So you have a, a full customization and collaboration uh, on between different parties in the same project and publishing all these uh, sub-models or sub-disciplines model to the federated model is also uh, cloud-based and you have the access to all versions of different parts of the project. So this is a really, really brief explanation. It's, uh, I tried to, to explain it uh, really briefly and hopefully understandable and I'm gonna show you how this works in practice. So we still have that in the same project but I'm gonna create a new project which will be stored online. So I'm gonna create a new project which will be uh, created uh, on our common data environment using the option online projects. And of course this option is only available if you if you purchase our uh, Bexel Common Data Environment Enterprise solution. So you have the pricing list again on our uh, website. And if you're interested for that, you can write us and we'll try to respond as soon as possible. So if you have your Common Data Environment um, created and you using it for your projects for creating and managing your online Bexel manager project. So the workflow is that we can create online project and depending on the uh, internet speed it takes some time to system loads all available projects and once it's completed you see the uh, online environment and we see different projects that we already created. So if you want to create a new project which will be hosted online, we can create a new project from already created local projects of Bexel Manager. So I'm going to create a new one. And this will be called version 1 from my uh, demo sample model, which comes with the installation of Bexel Manager. So uh, the system will create new project and will upload the information uh, on that common data environment, which is cloud-based. So the system uploading the project files. And this is uh, practically the way how you can establish your online project. So now we created new project. And similarly for uh, different kinds of uh, cloud-based platforms, we can manage the users. We can assign different users. Currently I'm an administrator and uh, I'm also the owner of a project because I'm creating that. So if we want to uh, add some new users which will be collaborating with us on the same project, we can use the option add or remove different users and we can, depending on the uh, credentials that we provide to users, they will have different kinds of access to the different parts of the information. Currently, I've added additional, uh, let's say, user and uh, its role on the project is just the user. We can change the roles. We can add different roles in the future. We're gonna improve this as well. And this is the way how you can manage the project users. So once it's managed or once you satisfy with that, uh, we can use and create uh, the uh, local versions of the online projects. And of course, every time when we create a uh, new local version and update new uh, information to online platform, all participants in this project will be informed by emails. So I'm going to create a new project or I'm going to 
create uh, the new local version from this project by uh, or I'm going to show you how you can do it here. This is uh, another uh, button for that. So we can also have the new tab right here, which is online. And it's used to, let's say, check uh, in or check out all the uh, informations that you created in your local version or to download the information that uh, someone else, some other user on the, on the same project is created and published. Uh, so I'm going to create a new project. Uh, if, for example, in my local version, I'm changing something, so I'm going to create some new selection sets uh, from these B model elements. I'm going to select some doors or something like that, or beams, for example. So these are the beams in my project. I'm going to create new selection set from selected elements. And I can create, let's say, additional a clash detection job using uh, these beams and something else. So I'm going to create clash detection job from the uh, selection sets from my beams and some uh, HVAC systems. Hit run system finds uh, clashes and this is it so we are satisfied with this new version of the project and we want to upload this version to all participants of the project so everyone can check the information that we that we provided so uh, i can go just to check in option and using this option all the information will published or uploaded to that common data environment so i'm gonna set yes to save this local version prior to that and now the system uploads all the information but before that we have to provide some information which will be used in history so everyone can uh, can know what are the differences between different versions of the project so right here i'm going to create description And that's it. So the system uploads the, this information. And right here, we can go to the uh, projects again to online project and check the latest information. So this is now the latest project version, which is published right now, a few minutes ago. And all um, participants on the project received immediately received email and that I've published or uploaded the new version so they can now go again in the similar way as I've currently did they can go to this project version and they can open this project version and this is practically the workflow uh, using the common data environment so these are different versions of the project and we can also go back to any previous version. So this is really important. So if someone else uh, want to check the previous version, so we can uh, create different number of numerous versions of the project at any point of time, you can go and open any of the previous versions of any of online projects. And this is the way how you can compare different versions with the uh, with all uh, respective information which are contained within that version. And this is the the really really briefly explain the workflow how you can create online project and how you can uh, create and publish and also download the latest versions of the project in order to collaborate with other participants and share your information in this way. So now I'm gonna uh, give my, uh, let's say, screen uh, access or uh, credentials to, uh, to our software engineers in order to, uh, to present you the uh, open API uh, workflows. So I'm gonna 
kindly ask our lead lead software engineer Urosh to jump in. I'm gonna give him the access. All right, uh, thank you, Milata. Uh, before we continue, just first do a quick mic check. I hope everyone can can hear me. And uh, thank you, thank you for for the introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Urosh Ivanovich. Uh, as Milata mentioned, I'm lead software engineer here at uh, Bexel Consulting, co-leading co along with our colleague Philip Lukovic. And today I will be uh, presenting you an introduction on <clears throat> on Bexel Manager uh, API. I hope uh, that everyone can hear me well. So I will just right now share my screen. Okay, I, I hope everyone can see, see that right now. So um, let me just jump back to this presentation. So as I mentioned today, we'll, we'll be covering uh, some ba basics of the Bexel Manager API and uh, what are uh, what is it firstly and uh, what are the benefits of using it and uh, and we'll go through some practical exa examples in Bexel Manager and later on in a Visual Studio environment to demonstrate how uh, add-ons for Bexel Manager can be uh, can be quickly developed. So uh, let's go to some basic terminology. I suppose uh, the majority of people if, is familiar with the concept of API. It is an application programming interface. Uh, these are a couple of definitions from from the internet on what the, what the API is. So it is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. One of the definition, it basically specifies how software components should interact. And it's, it's basically a contract or a public uh, or, or uh, a data contract or a public interface that describes how we can utilize uh, the functionalities of some application and extend it to our needs or custom tailor it to, to our needs. Uh, the public open API, of course, is, uh, is an API that is available uh, to, to a public audience. So it's not uh, locked within uh, one organization. Anyone can use it, uh, of course, given uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, they have the appropriate uh, documentation, access to documentation and appropriate knowledge, uh, programming knowledge to use it. And uh, another uh, acronym we will uh, we'll use is uh, IDE or Integrated Development Environment. So basically once we uh, get into a Visual Studio, uh, that will be an example of, of an IDE. So uh, with that out of the way, what are the actual benefits of, of using the Bexel Manager API? So the primary goal is to customize or extend functionalities. So we can, uh, we can customize the, the existing features within Bexel Manager, uh, custom tailor it to our needs, maybe uh, present some things different in the user interface or add the uh, uh, or uh, group together a couple of different functionalities into a single into a single one, uh, make some shortcuts and so on. And of course, we can extend those functionalities, but by further uh, further adding features on top of the existing ones. So, uh, for example, we can we can add custom exports to different uh, to different formats. We can connect connect with other software and so on. So another goal is to automate uh, the repetitive or time-consuming tasks. For example, uh, once you start. Uh, creating a new project inside Bexel Manager, you might find yourself creating uh, 
structure, custom structure of selection sets, you might start uh, creating some folders based on, on your needs and you sort of uh, do that every time you create a project within your organization, you have some templates uh, how you do this stuff and it takes time to do that manually e each time. Of course, one one uh, solution would be to use smart selection sets and just exchange them between the project and the another solution would be to write a simple script that you can just run each time you create a new project and create that structure automatic automatically and we will see some examples of those scripts uh, in a couple of minutes and as i mentioned uh, connection with third party software is also something uh, that is a, a great benefit of using the api so you can export the data from excel manager into a, some third party format or connect maybe with the sap system or uh, or uh, online document management system or uh, any uh, sort of a web service or a database and exchange information between Bexel Manager and that uh, third-party software. Uh, regarding the technology that is uh, used here, um, uh, primarily uh, the entire Bexel Manager platform and uh, naturally the API is uh, written using uh, .NET Framework for Microsoft and using C# -sharp language. So it was only natural to uh, expose the API. Uh, first in that language, uh, maybe down the road, we'll expose the API functionalities in some different languages as well. But for now, it is exposed in C sharp language. So basically, if you have some uh, uh, basic knowledge of uh, object oriented programming, or you used previously languages such as uh, Java or C++ or JavaScript, TypeScript and so on, uh, it would be an easy switch to, to C Sharp. And uh, of course, as it is a, a fairly mature language and, and uh, backed by, uh, by .NET Framework and Microsoft, it is very, very well documented and there is a large uh, online knowledge base available for everyone who wants to learn uh, C Sharp or, or .NET Framework. Uh, in order to to uh, to work with uh, with uh, Bexel Manager API, you, your projects should uh, should target uh, .NET uh, Framework version 4.7 on or later for for the currently pub public uh, version of Bexel Manager 10.22, and uh, of course uh, we will cover some. Uh, some simple examples in Bexel Manager console that do not require uh, an integrated development environment such as Visual Studio, but if you want to develop some something more complex, it is highly recommended that you use uh, some IDE for C Sharp. Uh, for Visual Studio, of course, there is a free version available uh, for download from, from the official site of, of Microsoft. So there, there are basically a couple of different types how we, uh, how we can, uh, diff different ways how we can extend the functionality in Bexel Manager or how we can create those add-ins using Bexel Manager API. The first one would be uh, the scripts. So the scripts are usually used uh, for some simpler use cases. Uh, it's basically a single, single file and uh, and uh, it it uh, it requires no third party id it can be done directly in bexel manager uh, as we will see in a practical examples in a couple of minutes and they can be easily exchanged it's just a simple file you exchange it with your colleagues or with your entire uh, company and you can reuse those scripts uh, as long as uh, some more complex stuff uh, goes, we recommend using co uh, commands and applications. If if you use the maybe a Revit API or Navisworks API, you might be uh, familiar with concepts of commands and applications. And uh, we will also 
show some practical examples of, of those as well. Uh, for, of course, the more complex use cases which require additional uh, user interface or you want to build, for example, a complete uh, a complete application within Bexel Manager with rich user interface and maybe connection to some web services and databases. We recommend doing that by implementing uh, applications. Okay, so with that all out of the way, I will jump right now to Bexel Manager where we see our familiar sample model. Uh, firstly, we will jump to, uh, as I mentioned, the API console. So this console allows us to write scripts directly and execute them in uh, in uh, Bexel Manager. Uh, they, they are uh, fairly straightforward, simple files, which all are also written in C Sharp uh, regarding uh, how to uh, how to start writing a script, we highly recommend checking out on our website. Uh, there is uh, a lot of materials regarding the API, one of which is uh, the API documentation. So if we open this documentation, we can see uh, the entire list of all the uh, things that are available through our API. So basically all the classes or the methods or the properties which we expose through our API are documented here. There is also search functionality. For example, we can scroll down to project, for example, click on that and we see the list of, of properties and methods that is available on our project uh, type or project class. So we see one of those is this static property called uh, called Active Project, and if we go to the the docs, it says okay, it returns the currently active project, which is open within Bex Bexel Manager uh, application, and we will just quickly test that. So, for example, I just created now a new script, and according to the documentation, if I type something like this. And for example, say return project. If we go back to the documentation, we can see that there is something called a full name with, which returns the full name of the project. So if we type dot full name and execute this, we can see we got here the full name of our project as is also written here in the title bar. So that was just one simple example. If we, for example, want to access the elements in the projects, we just type project.elements. And if we type, for example, count, we can get how many elements are there in, in, in this project. Uh, similarly, we can go ahead and say, for example, take the first element and write me the family name of that element. So if we execute this, we get our family name. And if we are interested in category of that element, we just change this category, execute. Okay, it says it's a mass. Of course, this is just a, a really simple example on, on, on uh, what, what we can do with, with the API. Uh, I highly encourage you to go through the documentation and, and, and uh, play and test and try it yourself to see uh, what, what uh, else you can access. Of course, you can uh, get the element by, by ID, whether it is a, a GUID or, or, uh, or an internal ID, you can get elements by ID as well. For example, if we type schedules and type count here and execute it. Okay, so maybe just go back here and let's just say we want 
to get the name of the currently active schedule. Just clear this up a bit. It says it's a planned baseline schedule. If you look here to the left, you can see exactly that, that it is the currently active schedule at the moment. And so the name of that schedule is written here in the console. Okay, so with this really simple example, I would uh, right now jump to the already existing script we have here. Uh, so what does this script do? This script, uh, this script uh, runs through the tasks in the currently active schedule as we saw before how we can get that active schedule and it goes through all the tasks as we can see here with this for each loop it goes through all the tasks of, of the schedule or the leaf tasks to be precise and gathers elements from these tasks and uh, does some analysis with them so in this particular case it uh, calculates the total costs of elements and their start and finish date according to this particular particular schedule which is currently active and and these leaf tasks so it is a really simple for each loop it goes through all the tasks all the elements it says okay if in this dictionary here i have uh, already added these elements just just add the value uh, of that element according to that task to the sum and as far as start date and finish date go we uh, we calculate the start date as the earliest date uh, of that earliest occurrence of that element in the, in the schedule and the finish date the last occurrence of of that element within this schedule and once we get all that information stored in these dictionaries so we got costs we got start dates we got finish dates what do, can we do with that information? In this particular case, we will write down these costs and start dates and finish dates into a property on the element itself. So that is not something that is uh, usually uh, present on, on elements in, the, in our BIM model, but we will write down uh, uh, this information in properties using the API. So by declaring this using block here, as you can see, begin batch change basically indicates to the system that we are going to modify the model somehow. And as we are running to uh, several elements, so basically uh, the, the, the majority of the elements in the project, we are making a lot of changes. So in order to to execute those changes efficiently, we will uh, begin this batch change right now in this using block. And we say, okay, go through uh, all, the, uh, all the elements that we collected and write down in the property total cost, the total cost of that element. If the property uh, doesn't exist already, we will add it, else we will just update it, okay? So in the similar manner, we will write down the start date and finish date properties uh, as well. And okay, I will just quickly now run this script. It says it executed successfully. We'll now close this window and if we select some elements right now in the editor, in the viewer, we can see, okay, th these are our newly created properties. So we have a total cost property, a start date and a finish date property created on that element uh, on and on all elements that are, that were associated with this schedule, that were linked to this schedule. So right now with this information embedded in properties, we can do various things such as we can uh, export those properties into an Excel spreadsheet and give it to some third party application to, to import, or we can export the entire uh, B model along with all the properties 
to an IFC file and exchange that file with another application as well. So that was a, a simple example on, on what can be achieved uh, with using the scripts. Uh, but there are some downsides with, uh, with the console using, for example, uh, if some of you are familiar with, uh, with programming or, or integrated uh, development environments, you might be, uh, you might be used to having uh, some sort of IntelliSense. So when you type, it will suggest you, uh, what can, uh, you use. For example, if I type the dot here, it will say, okay, you have the, active property here. Uh, it is currently uh, not available in the console mode. We are planning to, to add that feature to the console as well. But for now, uh, this sort of a smart completion functionality is possible through, through Visual Studio. Uh, okay, so I will right now close the console and before handing it back to Visual Studio, uh, I would just like to briefly uh, check uh, to show you the some of the examples of the add-ins that can be done through our API. Uh, one of which is the this simple uh, sort of a model checking utility. So in this example, we see we have a couple of rules set up uh, in this user interface to check whether the, some properties exist or not, and we can. Uh, select here if you want to use all the elements in the project or, or we just want to check on the selected elements. And we have a checkbox here that says, I want to save the results of this model check run uh, to selection sets. So let's just go ahead and run this. Okay, it says it's complete. If we go to our selection sets now, we can see that a new folder is created with the date, with the current date, and it lists all the rules that were checked. And under those folders, we can see which elements passed and which elements failed. So we can just easily have this information reported to us uh, using the API and creating the T selection sets. And uh, we can, of course, then use these selection sets to, for example, export these failed elements to the BCF file format and report an issue to our modelers and say, hey, you are missing this property on these elements. And that is one example of the application add-in and some of the examples of the command add-ins uh, are, for example, we can export our cost data here or our assigned items, we can export them to a GAIB format, for example. So we can, this command is uh, basically developed completely using our cost API. Uh, this, the export to GAIB is not something that is default uh, available here in, in the assigned items, but through our API and add-in system, we easily implemented such feature uh, to, to export into a, uh, a, a guide uh, format and we can uh, export our cost version. Of course, it it automatically fills in the name. Uh, it exports the currently selected. So if I select this cost version, it will export that cost version to a guide XML file format. So, okay. Those are some examples of the commands and then it's, and uh, right now we will jump into a Visual Studio environment. So basically what I have here set up is uh, some basic skeleton or the structure of my, my add-in project. Uh, I wouldn't go into much detail on how this was created because it is uh, fairly well described in our getting started guide. If you uh, open that uh, that PDF, you can uh, see the detailed explanation how you can set up uh, the project within the Visual Studio environment. So I basically have the structure already set up here. And we will uh, right now uh, write a simple command. So before 
uh, editing these existing ones. I will just right now run, quickly run this, just to show you how, what, what is already there. So by running this, this add-in, it will automatically start Bexel Manager. And if we open our sample project again, okay. So if we go right now to our add-ins tab, uh, we can see uh, we can see some. Uh, maybe I just opened the the wrong version of Excel Manager. Just let me check that again, please. Just okay. Okay, let me just build this again. I probably didn't rebuild the project before I started. I will close this these instances of Excel Manager. Okay, let's check whether the files are here. Okay. We'll just run Bexel Manager again. So basically this uh, simple adding command will just say in a dialog, hello from command, and we'll see how that looks in a, in a minute. Okay. So right now, if you go to add-ins, you can see a new ribbon button here appearing. It's called the my add-in button and we have a my add-in command here. And if you click on the command, it says hello from command as we saw in the code. And if you click on the button, it will just display the name of the project and the total element count. Okay, not, not very impressive. <laughs> Uh, let's right now try to, uh, I'm gonna fire up the Bexel Manager again in the background. So what we are now uh, going to do is to take that existing uh, schedule script I show a couple of minutes before that uh, embeds the properties of total cost and start date on the elements. We'll take that script and and execute it first from the command, and then we will build a simple uh, user interface in a Bexel add-in application where we can select the actual schedule we wish to use for that for that script. If you remember, in, uh, in the existing script, it automatically just takes the currently active schedule and uses the information from there. I will now copy this script and simply just paste it here into this execute code on my command. And I will, for example, if we want to change something, I would change, for example, we can add here a counter. How many elements were changed by this script? and we'll initialize it to zero and then increment it each time we add some uh, change some properties of the element and instead of this message we will write total elements changed okay okay so let's just fire up Excel manager again. Oops, we got issue here. I will close this instance here because it's probably interfering. Just let me quickly check if everything is okay. Let's just delete these previous files. 
Okay. So what we are now expecting is when we click on this command, it will run the same code as in the script. And additionally, we will be greeted at the end with this dialog box showing us how many elements were changed by the script. So let's see if it does that. So if you go now to our uh, command and click on it, it says, okay, we changed this many elements and we can just, of course, as previously shown, click on any element here and see that the script was executed and we have our total cost start and finish date properties. So uh, that, would be a quick example of the command and we'll now jump into a, something a bit more complex, a bit more fancy, so to say. We will uh, have our button here in Ribbon as I show, shown in Bexel Manager. We will add some icon to it and we will add some user interface. So I will right now create a form I will call it the main form. And we have our nice designer here in Visual Studio. We'll add a combo box so we can choose the which schedule we wish to use. And let's add, for example, a button place it here, we'll call it run. And we will add a label on top here and set, for example, choose schedule. Okay, so let's write some code. When our uh, form loads, we, we want to say, I want to fill these options here in the dropdown with the currently available schedules. So I will write this combo box data source equals. Then again, we will go to our project dot active project to, to get the currently open project in Excel manager. And then we will say schedules. And you can see this auto completion now in Visual Studio, which is very nice. Also, uh, the documentation you see here on the website is automatically integrated in this environment. So if you hover uh, over any of these items, it will uh, show you the, the documentation. So. It says, okay, schedules is a collection of the schedules that are in the project logically. So I will say, I will take all schedules as a list and put them in this combo box here. And also I will want to tell the combo box that it should display the name property of of the schedules in this label here. And that would fill this and on a run, when we click run, I want to run the exact same code we ran here in the command. I will just copy all of this, go back to the run button code, just paste that here, okay, it's, probably asking for some definitions. Okay. So basically we have our the same code here, but now as we uh, enable the user to choose which schedule uh, they wish to, to uh, run the script on, instead of uh, accessing here the currently active schedule, we will say, 
you will take this combo box and take its currently selected item, uh, quickly just cast it as a schedule, and we will do a check if nothing is selected. So if schedule is null, we will show message to the user and say no schedule selected. And then we'll re just return. We won't run any of this code if no no schedule is uh, is currently selected. And the rest of the code executes the same. Okay, and one final thing we need to do. So in our application registering code, you can see here we are uh, adding a new button in the in the Bexel Manager ribbon. So it's called my adding group, my adding button. Let's just quickly change that to schedule and the button will be called run schedule integration. And for example, we wish to have uh, an icon on our button. I will just, I already prepared some some icon. It's an icon of a Gantt chart. So we register the icon. We register what happens on the click of a button instead of just showing us the name and of the project and count of the elements in the project. We want to say just create this main form we design here. This this main form and show it when the user clicks the run schedule integration button. And I think that would be enough. Let's just rebuild and start Bexa Manager again and see now how this actually looks. Okay, let's open our sample project again. Okay, if we go back to our add-ins now, we can see now we have a nice Gantt chart icon. It's called run schedule integration. And let's try, okay. So it shows the, the dialogue we created. As you can see, it listed all the schedules available in the project. We can close this quickly and check. Okay, there are four, four schedules available in this project. And there are four schedules here. We choose which schedule we wish to run this script on and just click run and the rest should be the same. It just says how many elements were changed. We click okay and we select some elements here. We quickly check that the data is here, the, the cost and the start date and the finish date according to the, to the schedule we selected here. Just quickly check if our safety code works. If we just delete this and click run, it will say no schedule selected and it will do nothing. So that was, uh, really uh, like briefly ex explained example uh, of of uh, application add-ons, of commands add-ons, and on uh, script add-ons. So it's basically the same thing. It all depends on how much how much complexity you want to introduce with your add-in. Of course, uh, this is re really a simple example. You can really create within the .NET framework and the Visual Studio environment. Uh, anything you wish regarding user interface, you can uh, use some third party libraries, you can uh, connect to a database, connect to a web service, uh, have some rich visualizations here and so on and so on. At the same time, 
using the benefits of the Bexel Manager platform and all, of all the integrated data data within the, this platform that is exposed and the functionalities that are exposed through our API, which is, as I mentioned, uh, documented uh, here. You can see everything in this technical documentation. You can also see a, a getting started guide guide to get you set up uh, within the Visual Studio environment and you can read more on on what you can achieve with the API here on our website. I would also like to point out uh, that the examples that are uh, written uh, here uh, today on this webinar will be available uh, along with the with the video of today's session so you can go back to this code and and play it, uh, play with it yourself and change it and modify it and of course should you have any questions you can ask him here now or or later uh, through our support uh, email and that would be pretty much it from me uh, before we continue uh, uh, answering your your submitted questions I would uh, wish to uh, say that right now we will show uh, show you the uh, simple uh, poll and uh, we would ask you kindly to to fill it in uh, your general thoughts on this on this uh, webinar session and it it should take only a couple of minutes and once you fill it in uh, we will go back to the user submitted question and we will wrap up. So right now I will uh, start sharing my screen and talk to you in a couple of minutes. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your patience uh, for taking uh, that pool, which will be really helpful to us. I have to remind you once again that all the webinars or the recordings of webinars will be sent to you and probably in next uh, days we'll upload all these sessions to YouTube or online channels or social networks so you can download all these materials as well. We see uh, some of you are asking if we're going to attach some of these PowerPoint presentations and uh, presented materials. Yes, we're going to upload uh, most of the materials which are presenting during these sessions to our user area, so you'll be able to download it. Hopefully, within next days, we're going to upload not just the uh, models, sample B models which we used, but also some some of the created add-ins and scripts and also uh, much more additional materials will be available progressively in, in the next days and weeks. Uh, we came to the end of these almost five week long online webinars. Uh, we had a great time presenting Bexel Manager at, as a unique integrated BIM platform and hopefully you learn something new. Um, I would be more than happy if we managed to interest you in BIM workflows and processes using Bexel Manager. And uh, if you enjoyed these online sessions, we're planning to make some more. So very soon we'll organize some additional training sessions. And as I've said, we publish, we're planning to publish more educational material on YouTube and also sample models and script presented using, during these sessions will be also uploaded to user area and we plan to share some much more useful material also in the in the next days so if no more questions thank you again thank you very much stay tuned stay healthy and hear you soon